Hello boys and girls. I hope everybody's doing well during these perilous times. You see different things happening by the day that make you just want to curl up into the fetal and, um, you know, just wait it out. But I got a juicy one for you. I recently came across the book Weird Scenes at the Canyon by David McGowan. Um, wow, not really expecting much. Uh, it basically shattered the whole classic rock image in my mind and it just makes so much sense on why things kind of unfolded through the music industry as they have leading into modern times. This will probably be a, like a three-parter because uh, it's a lot of info and I'm not I'm basically just kind of skimming through what this book is about because it's pretty it's pretty condensed and a lot of people don't like to read so I, I feel that the, mo the more exposure it has, the better, because this blew my mind. Uh, to get into it, Laurel Canyon, it's uh, in Los Angeles, within the Hollywood Hills District. It was originally inhabited by the Tongva people of California, so it seems like a lot, a lot of places, especially in the west of America, United States, We've kicked these indigenous tribes out of where they've been living for thousands, if not millions of years in order to bring forth some motive, you know, whether it be industrialization, putting a bunch of houses or starting a music military intelligence industry that would rattle the whole world and also establish the, you know, different forms of mind control and mass population mind control through media that we have today it's just gone out of control today but this is kind of you wonder and ask yourself where it all started and how we could be so stupid to just let this happen and mindlessly watch these terrible shows um, who knows who who's behind Netflix these days I mean we know but I've, heard, I've actually heard it's Michelle Obama's got, got her hand in there, but I don't know if she still does. Um, Laurel Canyon basically swept all the um, these these producers and masterminds. Well, it start, starts as a military operation, and um, it's w w situated within this canyon. There is a studio. It's uh, and within the Laurel Canyon district is Lookout Mountain which is where the actual studio is located, where all these big artists just popped up out of nowhere. There's also evidence in the book that big um, movie stars and producers such as John Ford, Jimmy Stewart, Howard Hawks, Bing Crosby, which I love Bing Crosby. A lot of these are heavy blows because it's not saying that they're not good artists, and um, there, there are very good ones, but the motives and intentions are what come into it. Like, who are their producers? Who are they funded by? Because these contracts are basically, when, they, when people say they sign their soul to the devil, sold their soul to the devil, it's, you know, not literally the devil, but these producers own you, and the whole machine itself is satanic. So I guess... Yeah, you sold it to the devil, but um, people have a lot of misconceptions about this whole thing. I know I did, but um, Bing Crosby, Walt Disney, Marilyn Monroe, they were all given military clearance to work on undisclosed projects. So, especially early on when nobody really had an idea of what was going on, what they were cooking up over there, they were just doing all these projects. This could be lead into the moon landing you know the the fake filmed moon landing that supposedly stanley kubrick had a big hand in that boy um lookout mountain laboratory it's uh, 250 producers animators editors both civilian and military given top security clearances it's obscure how long this whole thing was an operation i could i mean i'm, I'm sure it's just changed form and spread to different locations. CIA in 1995 in Trinity and beyond. This uh, author, Peter Peter Liren, something like that. I, I can't even read my own handwriting, but 1995 Trinity and beyond the book. This person had access to CIA documents, which is how the Laurel Canyon thing started getting out. So um, to start, huge bands such as the biggest people you've ever heard 
um, such as The Doors, Frank Zappa, David Crosby of Crosby, Stills and Nash, you know, Buffalo Springfield, The Birds, all these all these big bands that, you know, this, the newer generations aren't, aren't probably going to be as familiar with. I barely was. It was mostly through, you know, listening to what, what your parents listen to. And if you are interested in music and have, you know, creative tendencies and urges, you tend to go back into older music and uh, especially classic rock was big for me in my upbringing. But this is more of the 60s and 70s era, which, which is when Laurel Canyon was big and started officially. Um, this was like Frank Zappa, The Doors, you know, Crosby, Stills and Nash, like I said. And these bands that basically came up out of nowhere and gained huge notoriety, you know, like overnight. The Mamas and the Papas. There, there's a lot that I'm, more that I'm gonna get into. And once again, this is all from the book, Weird Scenes at Laurel Canyon. It's just, I'm trying to give it a more, you know, paraphrase, digestible version here and just basically bringing attention to the book so people can go read that book because it's crazy. <laughs> and there's also been a bunch of movies on Laurel Canyon one with that boy Christian Bale and I'm sure these are more you know geared towards just fluffing it up and not really going into the meat and potatoes of the of the Laurel Canyon facilities themselves but um, there is a lot on this subject a lot of it's based on the hippie movement and the counter counterculture movement which plays a big role because we see these artists being seemingly pro hippie pro you know civil rights and all that but in reality a lot of them were you know military brought up and that's just a common theme in this book almost every single one of these big bands at least one member has military family like prominent military family such as Jim Morrison whose father George Morrison was an admiral during the Gulf of Tonkin incident which basically initiated and inspired it was like a false flag movement that inspired our involvement in the Vietnam War so that's a big that's a big thing uh, Jim Morrison like throughout a lot of his life stated that his parents were dead which you know makes it a lot easier to nip it in the bud with the questions on the parents if you know he just says they're dead that's that but that would have brought up a lot of questions why he basically without musical talent or like he's a, he's a poet essentially he has interesting poetry but a big point brought up in the book is how did he come up like already have his brand basically two albums worth of songs and his image already created as the doors began, it was all basically ready to go. And where did they really originate? Laurel Canyon. Jim Morrison and Jim Morrison and Mazarek met at most likely college. I believe it was UCLA. They were both film students, which is interesting. Um, more interested in film and art rather than the music. It was kind of just like a last resort for Jim, it seemed. He, he had no interest in music his whole life. Went to school for film and they just sort of put together this operation and Mazarek is like a genius organ player and it just <clears throat> came out of the blue essentially. A big theme in this would be controlled opposition. So where, where it seems that these guys are pro, pro hippie, pro civil rights, they're actually on the other end controlling people who are very, you know, like complacent, let's not, love and peace which i i firmly am love and peace and all that but you have to be, you have to see and discriminate between peer manipulation and what's just the right thing to do as a human being a lot of these people are frustrated runaway teens hence the manson family who also have a lot of military ties surprisingly um this goes into the video i made previously on charles manson being mystic or a madman i've been back and forth with the charles manson thing because i've heard evidence that he's a grand wizard was in willingly went into jail he was sent to terminal island which I'll get into later, but a Terminal Island Prison in California has a big role as well with <clears throat> potential MK Ultra military operations. Charles Manson was not, you know, he, he claims that he had no real influence over these children, that they were just 
living their lives and it's uh, it was all on their own will but there's without a doubt evidence here especially within the book that he used lsd used different manipulation techniques to steer the thought of this group and he wasn't alone i mean he was in cahoots with dennis wilson brian wilson uh, the which are the beach boys other artists david crosby was quoted to be really impressed by uh Charles Manson's music ability, they all referred to him as the wizard because he was just like in his own world and was behind the scenes on a lot of this music creation. He eventually got screwed over, you know, didn't get any record deals and didn't get any record deals and ended up in jail. So he might have been the scapegoat for a lot of this stuff. So um, that makes it a lot more interesting as well. Tex Watson, Bobby Bouzelet, who created the soundtrack for Lucifer Rising and was in a lot of occult satanic productions involving different people. They all were intermingled in, in Laurel Canyon, which was a big musical hotspot at the time between the 60s and 70s. Tex Watson actually made hair pieces for actors and <laughs> musicians in Benedict Canyon, which was very close to Laurel Canyon, and he lived in Laurel Canyon, so he would go to work Benedict Canyon and go back home in Laurel Canyon. Stephen Stills, David Crosby, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Apparently David Crosby is part of a royal bloodline. He's related to Alexander Hamilton, one of the founding fathers, which is why he is, a, is relevant at all. Um, why he's such like a god figure among the music industry people, especially at the time, which is mentioned at multiple different places in the book. David Crosby was also one of the founding members of The Birds. So if you look through, all this stuff checks out too. I, you know, it's like many times while reading this, I had to just stop and actually just do some internet searching because it, it was like unbelievable but fit together so well. You see that a lot of these band members flip around between bands, start new bands that end up being huge. Buffalo Springfield with Stephen Stills, David Crosby, The Birds, so both of them together, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and Young, Neil Young, is a big part of all this as well. Laurel Canyon, they had their own newspaper, talent agency, school, so they basically had their whole own operation going on here. The Wonderland School, which is connected to the Wonderland Murders, which are basically still unsolved murders of four people, supposedly masterminded by an Eddie Nash, which whose, whose real name was Adele Darib Nasrallah. So the last Nasrallah, Nash, there's an H at the end of Nasrallah. So I guess he just Americanized his name. Adele, Eddie, is probably Eddie in Palestinian form because that's, he's, comes from, from a wealthy Palestinian hotel owning family. So this guy owned strip clubs, he owned gay bars all along Laurel Canyon, and an accused money launderer, convicted money launderer. So he probably had ties with all these musicians. They all had these money operations going on where they had little pockets of money in different areas, keeping the operation funded and keeping the drugs flowing. There's a big tie to the bands and drug running and pushing of pharmaceuticals and LSD. Timothy Leary, who is also in Terminal Island, the prison where Manson and others were kept for a certain amount of time. And it, he was sent there for, Manson was sent there for car theft, which, you know, it's it's kind of like, supposedly Manson has been a criminal his whole life. And his, why, why would they send him to some crazy military related prison for a car theft, they, they would just put him in, you know, normal prison where all the other boys go. Instead of these high, high class, high profile criminals. Phil Spector and the Wrecking Crew connected to behind the scenes music for shit bands like the Birds. There's common, it's like a common joke that a lot of these early formed bands had no idea how to play their instruments. And they were just learning to play as they were doing their live jams. And the real good versions of their songs, which are the studio versions, are studio versions that have studio musicians, such as Phil Spector's Wrecking Crew. And Phil Spector's famous for being part of the like the the Rat Pack 
boys who uh, killed their wives. A genius, but crazy genius. He helped engineer, like, create the wall of sound, which uses reverberation and echo and sound absorption type technology to create that symphony sound in the recorded versions of songs you hear today, studio versions. But there's a lot of proof in this book that studio musicians are a big part of these upcoming bands. So they were the real talent while these bands were kind of just the members were stand-ins and military sons who were a lot of them put there to just push forward the hippie movement counterculture agenda. Another interesting fact was that Glenn Campbell was part of the Wrecking Crew at a certain point. So it seems like different studio musicians would like break out and be chosen to create their create their debuts. It seems like it's all it, it's all a machine here. It's there's little independence in this big music scene. Laurel Canyon was responsible for basically commercializing music and making it an industry. So before the 60s there was a lot more independence and in, you know it was just making music to make music for the love of music and then it turned into some money stadium box office ploy which bled into the film industry as well. So this creates a symbiosis like a parallel a tie between the music and film industry in Laurel Canyon, which was in Hollywood Hills. So it could have, it's probably the in cahoots precursor to Hollywood, the film industry. And this is how you create evil empires, folks. Straight up. This will be the end of part one, part two coming at you real soon.